What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Retro Handle Handhelds podcast, your home to the last week in handheld news, custom firmware developments, and stories from around the emulation scene. I'm your host, Stubbs, joined as always by my co host, Rob, the Retro Tech Hi, Dad, guys. and producer hey, Ban. What a day it has been, my friends. What is. How are you doing, for one thing? Doing well. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, after today, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a ride. What a crazy day. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's been kind of a crazy, uh, crazy week for emulation. So as some of you may have may have noticed, um, Yuzu and Citra are both gone now. All of a sudden, you know, on Friday we had our thumbnail all prepped and ready. It was like, hey. Guess what? Yuzu is fighting back. They got a lawyer. You know, we're going to go into this. And then just a few days later, we're like, Yuzu has given up. Uh, they're throwing in the towel and they're putting an end to development of their software, both for Citra and for Yuzu. And that is a big blow to the emulation scene. Um, I know in Discord, I've just seen all around our Discord, people just, you know, pouring one out for Yuzu um, all over all the discords everywhere. today everywhere yeah discords twitter facebook doesn't matter wherever you are it's big news yeah yeah it has been so uh nintendo got its way yeah they did so we're gonna we're gonna dive into that that's gonna be our big story today and we're gonna dedicate the first half of the show to that topic uh and then we'll we have some follow-up news so plenty to uh, go over so just strap in get yourself a uh, a beverage some agua Cause it's gonna go wild live chat how you guys doing tonight yeah sad day indeed sad day indeed yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. Oh, really smart yep. yeah yeah i know i don't even know i'm kind of at a loss for words just right now i'm just kind of they, they did the, the smart thing yeah yeah it, it would have been a long and expensive battle to just actually try fighting it well yeah, not just a, a long and expensive yeah. battle is the risk of them losing that could have been really bad for everybody so the fact that they yeah. settled even though they're gonna have to pay a lot of money and i don't think they have that much money i know they were making a good amount but i don't think it was in the millions it's no. um they kind of took one for the team there if you really think about it because if nintendo sets a precedence that emulation is illegal that is really really bad for the whole emulation scene because now companies can yep. just go after everybody everyone's speechless today yeah <laughs> don't all speak up at once i, I want to hear some opinions what, what do you guys think i mean my god rob no. i mean i know i saw you were just like i, I, I was i was this. yeah i know because it's it's something I've always enjoyed uh, covering and just experimenting with and seeing how far we could push hardware and things like that. Mm -hmm. It was it was a fun topic, but you know, it's kind of crazy turn of events because Yuzu kind of came back on Friday and then this Monday morning and it was like, okay, this is it, it's over. And then Citra comes in with that as well. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, for the most part, it's once it's on the internet, it's not going away. So people can still find oh, these yeah. things if they're resourceful, oh, yeah. but development isn't going to be there anymore. But the thing is, this is only for Yuzu. So it's not like you can't do develop anything for Switch emulation. It's just Yuzu themselves can't push anything. They can't push their source code, none of that stuff. But it doesn't mean somebody can come in and just pick up where they left off because it was open source. That's why it's so right. important for this type of projects to be open source. And right. while user might be out we still have Ryu Jinx, who announced they were going to be doing an android port a couple of weeks ago so i'm sure that's still in the works they're still doing updates i was actually testing out Ryu Jinx earlier and if you're on pc or <clears throat> sorry say on the steam deck chances are yeah. you're really not going to notice a big difference in performance you might not have the same quality of life stuff as far as like the hotkeys here and there but for the most part you're still set on that side and we still have straddle coming so we're still going to have some type of emulation on android we still have the older builds of yuzu that while we can't really share them they're still there and we have skyline 69 so if yeah. we want to do some testing on our devices and share it with everybody we can tell them like hey this is how it was here and yeah. people can still see it they can switch emulation is still here it's not going anywhere 
it's gonna keep going it's just yuzu unfortunately they got a little ambitious and they left themselves open for nintendo to come in and say we got you and they did like obviously you don't sell it for two million dollars if they don't have you on something the curious thing yeah. is why they didn't also go um, go after Ryujinx. I've That's the one thing I'm kind of left wondering. What I why. don't think they would have anything that would hold up in court with Ryujinx because okay. Ryujinx hasn't really been. They don't. They didn't do early access builds where you have to pay to get them to be able to run games that weren't released yet. That's the big thing. Right. So that's that's where lawyers can actually cling out and say, no, you're doing piracy because you're supporting games that aren't available to the public yet, which means you're getting these copies illegally and you're developing them illegally for people to pay you money and you can play these games. That's where Nintendo right. has them. Again, I wasn't in that room. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. But if I had to make an educated guess, which I mean, I'm somewhat educated. <laughs> I like to think so, that's basically what I would cling on to because that is piracy. There's really no way around that. So we kind of broke it down here uh, on our website. Andrew, one of our writers here, just really summarized the whole the whole thing pretty well. well Rob, I don't know if you can scroll down. There was multiple things. We got to really break this down, guys. Uh, this is just there's so many different angles to this uh, and things to cover. So one of the big there there is a lot to this. Uh, kind of a timeline of events again is uh, is is seeing uh, the fact that they were being sued to begin with. So we when we had our podcast last week with Joey, we this wasn't even a thing yet. Okay, this all happened transpired in the course of seven days. They were sued, uh, and we thought initially like, oh my god, this is it, you know. But they actually got a lawyer, and so we took that to be a signal of okay, they're going to take this on. They're going to fight back against the, the big bad, the big bad N who wins every time. And uh, that was kind of like, okay, a little bit, a little bit of hope. And then seeing the fact that no, this morning they settled for $2.4 million money that people are saying, well, maybe they have it since they were getting 30 K a month off their Patreon. I, I, I'm uh, pretty sure they behind don't. a paywall, but yeah, they the don't think so they're likely. Yeah. They're, they're an LLC. So most likely they, they're going to take, whatever the, any assets they mm -hmm. have and, and basically just yeah. fold the bankrupt and that's it bankrupt so. that's, that's, and then they're good they did this at least they were the smart. company takes a hit not the individuals well, the individuals are gonna exactly be exactly they other, smart thing. yeah they were protected yeah. so that's smart and other others are saying like they fell on their sword for the greater good of the emulation scene because now there's no legal precedent uh since they didn't let it go to trial and get an official ruling on it uh but i mean honestly isn't this might this already be enough for legal precedent? The the the, no. the judgment that the judge uh, hasn't signed yet, by the way. So there's there's a final judgment proposed that says, "Hey, look, you guys have to stop development. You have to hand over your app to uh, Nintendo. You have to hand over everything." Uh, but they, but the judge hasn't signed it yet, so nothing's fully official. But we're well, all even we're if not proactive. Even if that was to happen, that's that doesn't set precedent. So in order for there to be precedence, it has to go to court and the court has to reach a ruling. This is being settled outside of court. So basically, yeah. this is we're not going to take this to court. We're not going to set anything. We're going to accept your terms. And I, I don't think it was them actually getting a lawyer to fight back. And I don't think it was them also falling on the sword for the greater good. I think yeah. with them getting a lawyer is just being responsible. It's a smart thing to yes. do. Like if you're getting sued, you seek legal counsel. It doesn't 100%. mean, hey, we're about to go to go fight Nintendo. None of that. It could have just been like, hey, we're yeah. being sued. Let's go talk to somebody to tell us what the best move here is. And yeah. as far as like taking one for the team, Chances are these guys saw that if we go to court, we're going to lose all our money. We're going to be in a worse spot and yeah, we might end up damaging everybody else. So I, I don't want to say like they did it for a greater good. They just did the smart right. thing. At least personally, I think that was the best choice for them. Yeah. And you know, Citra, the, the, the Yuzu team, it looks like their statement on their discord today and to all everywhere was written by a lawyer, by maybe by Nintendo's lawyers. Like it's very like, <laughs> we, we will not support we piracy. We never wanted, yeah, yeah. you know, we never wanted to support piracy. We're going to take this down so we can stop piracy at all costs. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah. well, I mean, I mean, we made a, even a statement in our discord today saying like, Hey, here's our stance on this, which is. Uh, you know, talk about emulation still in our Discord, but don't share links to the Citra or Yuzu APKs or files for right mm -hmm. now. And also don't talk about piracy or where to get ROMs, which has always been something we've enforced. Uh, yep. And it's just to safeguard the community. And I'm sure on their end, it's just like they have to say that. Um, and it, their their Discord today was just a chaos. I mean, oh, just pure... I... <laughs> 
I it's stepped in there chaos. for a brief moment, and it, it's just it's end of days there. <laughs> you got further than I could. Uh, yeah, no, it's not good. I couldn't just, even just... step in to see the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> what one thing people need to understand is that just because you're emulating a current system doesn't necessarily mean you're for piracy. Like right. the fact is, if you own the games and you want to see them run the best that they possibly can, it's not going to happen on a Nintendo console. Like we've all seen it. Right. I own multiple copies of Breath of the Wild, and I own my original copy of Tears of the Kingdom. Like I went out, I bought those games, I played them on original hardware. Once I was done, I played them on PC. I played them on my Steam Deck, and the reality is, they ran better that way. I still own those games. Right. I still gave Nintendo right. my money. Up yeah. until um, this month, I was actually still subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online. Did I use it? No, but I was still giving Nintendo my money. I bought a bunch of games on the Wii U that age. never transferred oh. over. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, yeah. Anyway, what I was saying is like I've got giving Nintendo a bunch of my money for older games, and now that I have this option to play them on other systems, like that's at least I consider that's my right to do. Nintendo can't tell me like, hey, you bought this game. Yeah. Now you can't do anything else with it. You can only yeah. play it on our systems. Like, no, you don't get to tell me that. Even as much as they would love to do it, like you don't right. get to tell me that. Like I bought, I bought uh I mean multiple games for my Switch, and I just enjoy playing them on my Steam Deck better because it runs them better, because it oh. looks better, and that's my choice. Uh and just recently I really was getting into Yuzu and just the just how good it was integrated with, you know, emu deck and uh, and different various front ends and just enjoying just I'm like man this is like this is a whole better switch situation just yep. this the last week and then to have this happen all of a sudden I'm like man and then we saw emu deck today said hey we're going to prematurely uh proactively remove yuzu and citra from emu yep. deck yep. going forward so they already released the new version so mm -hmm. they said they're not going to rip out your current ones by the way so you've already have yuzu or citra installed on your steam deck or whatever they'll still be there they're not going to remove it but you're not going to get new installs and you're well, going to just manually if, install it if they did that would be a, a massive breach of trust for the public like can you imagine emu deck just going in and removing a program that you already installed on your device yeah that, i oh. would immediately uninstall everything from emu deck and never trust them again if they did something like that yeah but no yeah, that, yeah but what i was sorry i kind of patched out there but i was saying before is like it's not necessarily piracy like just yeah. because we're emulating a current system doesn't mean there's going to be piracy and just because something can be used for piracy doesn't mean you can set a legal precedence that it is going to be uh for piracy because if they did that then my phone my computer a bunch of my other mm -hmm. consoles everything all of those things would be basically just piracy yeah ipod chip says disagree h the reason dmca was created you do not have the right to play Nintendo games on non-Nintendo hardware. You could you could argue right to repair on that one. If you own the game, if you're taking the game out yourself yeah. and you're doing all of that, like there, it's yeah. it's a it's a weird area. That's the whole thing. What I'm saying, like if they would have gone to court and lost, you could have set precedents to make this officially like no, that's it. But the fact is, mm -hmm. like once I purchase something, it's mine. So the switch is mine. Right. The game is mine. I can't distribute this game. I can't redistribute this game because the IP is still Nintendo's. But what I do with my game is my decision. So there's it's 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 a weird area right there. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. There's 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 things Nintendo can say that you can do to say no, you can't. But there's also other areas where you can make the argument like you know, yes, I can because I bought this. What I can't do mm -hmm. is reproduce this game and sell copies of it to other people. That I can't do. And it's been removed even from searching in the Google Play Store, apparently, too. Wow. So, I mean, it's it's going. It has long-reaching repercussions immediately. Even I saw a backup repo, uh, Pineapple, that was up. And I was like, hey, here you can get your early access builds for Yuzu. And then, Literally, bam, five yeah, minutes later, hours. they're like, just in case, we're taking it down. We're done. You because know? the thing and, is, that there's a clause in, in the actual you know agreement that they have there talking about third parties and their relationship in any way and marketing it promoting it any mention of the yep. word yuzu and anything that has to do with it could potentially have you see some type of legal you know issue there so i think nintendo was very careful about this they, they try to cover yeah. every possible aspect when it came to yuzu and it, yeah i mean it's it's interesting because i think this is possibly setting a precedent in, in some ways 
but not a legal for precedent. People are, what a precedent. Well, what people are saying to uh, on chat, like, and again, I'm not a lawyer, so I could be wrong about this, but the way I understand it is like Nintendo can have their clauses, their their agreements, and all of that. Those are basically their rules. That doesn't make it a law. So just mm -hmm. because Nintendo is saying like, no, don't do this, doesn't mean it can be actually enforced. It's kind of like when the, the companies will put a sticker on it and say, if you remove this sticker, you void yeah. your warranty. Well, you can't do that. That's illegal. Just because the company is saying something doesn't mean it will actually hold up. That kind of goes back to my whole gray area argument. Maybe I didn't articulate it the best way. And, and if so, then I apologize. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I didn't study law. No, yeah. That. I'm just kind of sharing my experience like and my understanding. Opinions, you know, just... So I'm curious, does anyone I, I, have an experience with uh, Ryujinx? And do they use prod keys as well? Like Yuzu? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, just, I'm just trying it's to... It's similar. Yeah. The, the difference with Ryujinx and why they're probably... And they even said, hey, we're going to continue development. You know, we're not stopping. They put out a statement today, said, hey, we're going to continue as normal yeah, I saw on that. their Discord. Yep. Uh, and the reason is because Yuzu really got in trouble for putting their, their uh, software behind a paywall, allowing day one tears of the kingdom to work even before release right uh and it, well hold on it, it wasn't yuzu that allowed it it was it was patchers outside of yuzu who came in and patched yuzu to run tears of the kingdom before release right and yuzu got well, I think what happened was that. they um they an announced that like the day of release that it was running on yuzu and you know there's no issues and it's but i think they were claiming that the tools that are used for yuzu were also used to release the the game early so that's kind of the relationship yeah. there with yuzu also yuzu was telling you how to rip stuff and how to go they had, they had like a, that's, all that's what i used to do in my videos eight, i used to tell yeah. people go to their website they detail it because i didn't want to really get involved yeah. with that so oh, yeah they, 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 they i'm not surprised that they got in trouble for that as well yeah they flew too close to the sun you know they they tried uh the the patreon paywall was a big mistake and a lot of people are siding with nintendo here just for the fact that hey uh you guys are stealing games basically you're you're supporting stealing games and just pay your money for your games uh and you messed up you done messed up and this is what happens so i i mean ban how do you feel about all this i mean i kind of stand in the same kind of area of if they hadn't been locking you know the early releases behind the paywall i feel like it might have gone a little bit differently overall yeah uh, i mean even with with everything that's going on is kind of like it was hard to avoid this kind of situation for yuzu at least but even now it's like this is just kind of the one thing that takes the fall hopefully it doesn't start spreading everywhere else at least hopefully it doesn't start spreading because immediately what you see is fear and doubt everywhere well, that, uh, i think that chat does bring up a good point though because the, the thing is i was actually surprised about this as well that yuzu was based in the u.s they're based out of rhode island i was like oh that's that's too easy they probably in terms of, yeah i mean they to probably be able to sue have. them was yeah they should have, should have used some like offshore like, target <laughs> they got they got they got cocky they became a target uh mm -hmm. and here we are i mean i'm not i wasn't super surprised to see the news of them being sued i was surprised surprised today to see them so quickly just taking it you know and just but they but you're right you, they must have gotten their lawyer in their lawyer said hey guys uh you're fucked yeah. that's one I get one. Well, sure. Nintendo uh, was definitely working on this for a while. Like it's not right. like Nintendo just a couple of days ago decided like, oh, we're gonna do this. Like they probably had like a stack of paperwork. And if you talk to a lawyer, they're gonna tell you, like, no, they're gonna bury you in paperwork. This is gonna go for years and they're gonna drain you financially. And by the end of it, you're probably gonna lose yeah. just because they have more money. So is it worth it to right. drag this out, make it painful, yeah. and probably Again, it hurt the whole emulation scene as a if you lose or you know just settle and your LLC is going to take the hit. You individually, you're going to be fine, right? I don't. I mean, I yeah, I don't know. If they're going to be fine. Like they're probably going to have some type of penalty there too, but it's not going to be as bad because it's Yuzu getting sued, not the individual developers. We yeah, had a lawyer exactly. in our <laughs> yeah. LLC. Yeah, we had a lawyer in our or I thought it was a lawyer in our RH media chat over the last few days just going nuts like posting podcasts and different different mm -hmm. sort of legal precedents about this and that the the, the dolphin being removed from steam situation yeah. and um yeah. you know those are interesting takes to read uh it's it's very very passion 
fueled arguments on both mm-hmm. sides with most people it's, it's seeming always, to say this is a blow for emulation yeah, it's always been this kind of gray area that's that's kind of why it's it's you know as the thing is i mean obviously everyone says it's being used for piracy but you know there are people who actually are not using it for piracy so it's always that that constant back and forth that that, that argument about you know what is it actually being used for so yeah right it's, it's, again okay. just because something yeah. can be used for piracy doesn't mean that it's made exactly. for piracy i agree you can that. run pirated games on your phone you can run them on your computer doesn't mean that those devices are made for piracy windows uh, the the my computer runs windows i can and the steam deck runs on linux that doesn't mean windows and linux are made for piracy just because you can do it sure it's easy right and if you really want to make an, an argument that that's what it's for you probably can but you know that's just you can probably make the argument for anything and i mean the thing about saying emulation is specifically for piracy is that i mean was nintendo using emulation for piracy when they released dude like Nin- their games as well on their own system <laughs> yeah. nintendo downloaded a rom and sold yeah. it to us and there's evidence and people are it. forgetting yeah. that yeah, yeah they literally downloaded a rom <laughs> yeah and sold it to us like and nintendo switch online is all emulation all of the virtual console that's a virtual console it's all emulation nintendo has been using emulation forever profiting it off of it but just because they they want to be the ones that are selling it to you and control what games you can play what games you can't play now it's bad like if, if i do it it's bad if nintendo does it it's fine yeah it's like i wouldn't i wouldn't call that piracy i would call that their business but... And thank God for for Citra uh, having forks like other people forked that. So we're gonna see forks of, of Yuzu now. I mean, that's really the question. Are people gonna be brave enough to? They're gonna call it Yuzu. They're gonna have to call it. They're gonna have to call it like Zulu or Zuzu. Dude, and that's the thing. YouTube. Like the thing is, Not like YouTube. Yuzu is was one entity, but it could very well appear under a different name and and be set up in a different way and the code mm-hmm. can live on in many ways and mm-hmm. it might resurface and they may be a little bit smarter about it the next time around so there's a very good possibility that uh, yuzu does return and it's just you know in a different form that's all well it's kind of happening with skyland right now where yep. they're working on strata exactly. which is just based off skyline it's not going to go anywhere people already have access to it it's somebody's going to grab it and keep running with it and if not again we have ryu jinx which again it's just as far as performance it's arguably just as good <laughs> it's going to be called not yuzu not yuzu <laughs> yeah yeah call it yuhu it's, it's, it's too late for for nintendo Yoo-hoo. to put a lid on it and <laughs> chances are we're going to see emulation on their next next console too so it's kind of hypocritical from them to oh, yeah. to be to be taking this stance but it's never stopped them before I mean, it's just for me. It's it was always just fun. I mean, like you know, I, I, my mm-hmm. my last video on the EM seven eighty, the Mini Sport PC. And it's this little tiny PC, and I'm playing Switch games at at two times the native resolution. So I'm playing Switch mm-hmm. games on this tiny device better than an actual Switch. And for me, that's just yeah. cool to see, you know. And I own the game, so it's like, you know, it's kind of I, I get it. It's this kind of weird area where you're kind of sitting in the middle of of what it can be used for and what some people actually are using it for. So it's just. It's never ending, never ending discussion about emulation. I've seen a well, bunch of people make the argument that this is Nintendo trying to get ahead of the Switch too, because yeah. chances are it's going to be using a similar architecture. So you yeah, could argue, you can make the argument that they could crack that pretty, pretty soon. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with all that. But what I do know is that Switch emulation is here to stay, and one way or another, we're going to keep having access to it. Yeah. Yeah. Pour, pour one out. Yeah. Now that it started, it's not gonna stop. No, it's not gonna same, stop. Same it can't with, stop. Uh, same with can't, can't stop, stop, won't stop. stop. <laughs> yeah. And dude, you've got cheap handhelds that are able to run some of these games. Like it's it's not gonna stop. People yeah, want like to I do said it. I was I was on a little mini PC this big, three inches yeah. by yeah. three inches, running you switch can, dude, better than a you switch. Can, you, you, can get an, you can get a three plus yeah. and you can run some of the lighter games on yeah. a three plus and you yeah, can seriously. find a used one for like under a hundred bucks well and that brings me to the other point of uh wh- what do we do as content creators you know not only do the the brands that retroid and Burnick, who rely on on switch emulation as a selling point for people to buy some of their stuff now 
know, what do we do as content creators? Do we continue to show Yuzu, Citra in our videos? What do you, we use for benchmarking? Russ was even talking about that today. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's a fine line. I don't feel scared off from talking about this stuff. Uh, will I, nece will I necessarily show Yuzu front and center in videos? No, probably not. Uh, but how do we show switch emulation now? You know, it's, it's interesting. I'm probably going to be just going back to Skyline, the last, uh, like Skyline 69 is well. for, yeah. um, for Android. And just let yeah. people know like, Hey, this is the performance on Skyline, but there was a previous emulator that was able to push things a little bit further. <laughs> so chances are things could be better, you know, and just take from that what you will. That's, that's, that's probably, that's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think. Similarly, you know, Ryojinx, obviously that's the new standard for emu deck. Uh, that's already been replaced, you know, for, so for windows we're covered. I think Ryojinx is great. I mean, I liked Ryojinx better than Yuzu when I first got into switch emulation. I thought it was a better app. Yeah. That's what I use. Easier to use. Like way, uh, Yuzu, like way early. Me too. Yeah. Like 2021, I was really using Ryojinx. Uh, and now I just got used to use it because it's just integrated yeah. with everything. It works so dang well. Uh, so this well, is just a, it, guys. It's a it's a bummer. I feel I feel sad. I feel actual grief today over software. It's weird. Well, remember that there was multiple times where a game actually ran better initially on Ryujinx versus Yuzu. Like we just got really used to Yuzu because it got yeah. really popular, and then yeah. um, we all started using it because Skyline went away. And if we, I don't, I feel like if Skyline never went away, this wouldn't be a, such a huge deal because for a lot of people, they want to use it on their Android handhelds or their phones or stuff like that. But we're gonna have another one soon, Strato. So, Strato is I'm, is is an up and comer. Yeah. Are they based out of the U.S.? We already <laughs> for their sake. Well, what they're based not. on, and <laughs> it, it's it's really not. It's gonna be more about how they went about their business versus what they're based on. Like if they're not doing stuff that Nintendo can really get them for then there's really nothing they can do. Like you can sue somebody. It doesn't mean it's going to stick. You can scare and, people off if you want to, but. And the trash garbo that's known as egg and S is safe and <laughs> continues on. Well, that's just stolen user code anyway. Right. I yeah. Mean, I'm assuming, I'm assuming so egg and S is more of that. out of China, right? Um, that's, that's gotta be what it is. We're going like to see more of this. Different rules. You know? Yeah. Hey, that yeah. you don't. They might just do that. Like all uh, the companies, like uh, and like Ambernick and Retro, they might just start showing yeah. Egg and S. I could see that. I mean, that's what we that's what we saw, even as late as last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Pimax Portal Portal when we were first seeing oh. Switch emulation on that. Pimax themselves were showing us Egg and S running like Super Mario Odyssey on it directly in their booth at CES. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy how much changes in a year. We all we all got this. Spoiled treatment with Yuzu, and now we've all been bamboozled a bit. Uh, well, it was a good ride while it lasted, and Yuzu and Citra are gone, but not forgotten. Citra is the one that sucks. That's oh, the bigger one, yeah. That's yeah. The we're starting to get really good with Citra too. They were really yeah. starting yeah. to make good progress. Mainline, Mainline was so good. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm sure we're going to see more forks. You know. MMJ is is a pretty good stand-in here and there, um, as long as you use the storage access version, right? But Citra is a real one, and it's the only 3DS emulator that's really working fully. Uh, Panda 3DS mm -hmm. is going to be the replacement for Emu Deck, but it doesn't emulate all games yet, so it's only some commercial okay. games working. So we're we're going back to the Stone Age a bit with 3DS emulation. Yeah, I think for for the most part, I'm just going to stick to MM, MMJ because. It's the one that runs the best on pretty much all of the Android options. The, the one I there's usually... Citra, well, there's how many forks was there? There was MMJ, there's Enhanced, there was Mainline. Uh, and and 2.2. Uh, yeah, and 2.2 version, which I think that only worked on like Samsung devices. Yeah. Like yeah. The, 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 the improvement, not like the, it works regardless, but like the extra like performance boost, I think it was only for like Samsung devices. Besides, I never liked playing 3DS on on my Steam Deck or any x86 device. Like it, it never felt right. It just it feels better on an Android device. And I want to point out too from Team Pandora, emulation emulation is illegal is what's being claimed in court. No, no, no. Emulation itself, once again, is is not illegal and not on trial here. The, Nintendo keeps trying to put it on trial, despite the fact yeah. that they, of course, themselves use emulators in their paid stuff in their Nintendo Switch Online, but emulation 
as it itself is not illegal. We keep coming around to this conversation and uh, emulation, you can try to shut it down, but it's it's never going to stop. I saw the Nerd Nest podcast. Uh, the title was something like, um, is this the end of legal emulation? I, I don't I don't think so in response to that. I don't I really don't think so. This is two specific cases that will have some repercussions, but you know the emulation scene, guys. I mean, we always we always continue this. Like we can't again stop. Just I, like I mean, last year, legally, Skyline went away, then then Yuzu came from the ashes, and now yeah. we have other options that are gonna be coming down yeah. the road. And and even on PC side, obviously we have Ryujinx, so it, it never dies. It never will die. That's the yeah. whole thing. Nintendo will. It's it's like whack a mole. They they get one. Mm -hmm. There's a, three more that pop up, and that that's how it always is. So it's been that way for what twenty years now. So nothing yeah. is going to change. Yeah. Well, legally, this can't have repercussions right now because it was settled out of court. Like it never went to court. That's yeah, but well, take that's a look. True. Take a look at the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard situation. Nothing. Nothing was official there, and he still got his reputation ruined, and he didn't couldn't make movies or get hired anywhere for years. You know, until Amber Heard was proven to poop in a bed, you know, and then <laughs> everything was fixed. That's a very, very different. Well, see, the, what they went to court same. and the, they Basically said the president. The and there you go. No, Someone that was somebody being accused of, of abuse. That's <laughs> way different. That's not, I don't, I don't like that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> analogy. Indeed. Indeed, Aish. I'm just yes. saying. Just saying. That there's a connection somewhere to be made there. No, so they can use it to scare somebody off. Like, hey, look, we got Yuzu before, and now we can get you too. But it doesn't mean they actually can. If there's, if you haven't done anything outside of the of the boundaries of the law, they can't really get you for that. I know, but it's all about have optics. A it has to be by the court. Like, I know I a legal precedence. Part, no, but yeah, it's the, opt it's the optics. So people have are. Have we ever freaking out. really? Have we ever have we ever really cared that much about like the optics of emulation? No, no. it's never stopped us. It's never stopped any of us. And, and that's the thing. I, I'm curious to see if Nintendo will start cracking down on YouTubers that showcase Switch emulation. Because really, if you're not actually showing the process of backing up the games or using the software to do it and things like that, I mean, can they actually? go after youtubers for that i mean this they've tried this before in the past and yeah I, I, um, video game esoterica has a very good video about this topic and mm -hmm. it's definitely worth a watch to and check out his channel as well I and mean, i think you know i don't think they're going to be able to come after someone showing gameplay running on an emulator i mean it, it's just they probably can if you're using yuzu because they own it now interesting but yeah, if you're true. using they, 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 had, they had a hand over everything right yeah, yeah, they had yeah. Handle everything. So if you're you showing Yuzu, they can claim like, "Hey, you're using our property in a way that we don't want you to do it." So no, you can't do that. As YouTubers, the worst that can happen for us is we get copyright strikes, and the videos yeah. we make yeah. get taken that's down. That's what I was. I was actually telling that to. Mm -hmm. I think we were talking about that with Mikhail, and I, you know, you just basically, you know, until they come after you, 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 you leave it as it is for right now. Your older videos and whatever you have up there, and you know, you see what Nintendo does with it or not. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I have spent a portion of today just backing up and archiving all sorts of links, files, you know, emulators. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny, builds. in 2024, I, I, I'm not as concerned about something like Yuzu being saved and backed up because it never dies on the internet, ever. You know, that yeah. will be preserved forever, you know. Mm-hmm. I just want to say something for somebody that's in chat. They're saying like emulation is illegal because 99% of people aren't ripping their games on to play them on their PC. Like, no, that's not that's not how it works. Just because something can be used for illegal means doesn't make it illegal. Yeah. 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 I, I absolutely agree there. It's it's something that just it it's it's just not gonna go away. It's it's just not. We can yeah. talk about this all day and go in circles oh, as much as we want sure. here, but oh, uh, easily. I think, I mean, that kind of hits a lot of the, the main points I wanted to get out. Um, Nicholas, is it it is illegal to violate copyright protections, plain and simple? So yes, Yuzi emulation was illegal as a whole. There's, yeah. There's well, a, there's what, just there's still a, a lot of copyright protection. Like if you're distributing, if you're ripping the game and distributing, I agree with that. You need if I'm ripping my own game, 
using my own device mm-hmm. right for my own use i'm still playing the same game that i paid for again yeah. this is all like the thing is the I know a lot of people aren't doing it. So yes, if you're downloading a game that you don't own and you're playing on something else, then yeah, of course that's a violation of that. But what I'm saying, the argument is, and I know a lot of people aren't doing this. I'm just saying, if you're playing your own game, ripping your own game and playing on something else, you still pay the devs. You did everything right. You're using your own property. Then I don't see an issue with that. I don't think they could actually make an argument against that even in court. What? Yeah. And there again, the, the mistake they made there is just how the prod keys work, right? Because Nintendo's Nintendo's argument there is uh, they're using you have to use these prod keys to r- make the games work, and you have to feed that into the software, and they walk mm-hmm. you through kind of how to get that and how to how to do yep. that. Yeah. Uh, so they're helping out not only that, but the paywall thing. So they just again they made some kerfuffles and some flubs. And I really hope that Rayo Jinx, I pronounced that like three different ways during this episode, <laughs> that Ryu Jinx uh, doesn't follow that, those same mistakes. You know, no Patreon, keep it free, keep it open source. I just, yeah. And DMCA, that's yep. a whole other thing. Uh, yeah. There's, there's just, there's, there's so many things that, that fall into this. So unfortunately, it's not it's not black and white. It's not clear cut like, yes, no, good or bad. There's a lot of gray area here. And it, you can also get into right of, right to repair. Like if it's your own thing, you should be allowed to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Which as, as long as you're not full circle, yeah. basically, because yeah. there was a there period where companies didn't want you to have that right to repair. And now we're starting to see exactly. that trend coming back where we're going to have removable batteries and there's more standards in, in, in the mobile industry and things like that. So for sure we things come full circle a lot of times and i think that's why i think that an actual going to court against this like it wouldn't hold up outside of reusing i'm sorry uh using making money for early access because you can make the argument like no you can't say it's illegal for me to rip this game because i paid money for it i'm preserving this game for my use later on if something happens to this cartridge i should still have access to what i paid money for the right to repair so you can make that argument yeah. and i'm Personally, I think that's a solid argument. Will people use it for pirating? Yes, that's always happened. Unfortunately, it, it is what it is. You don't want people to pirate your games, make them easily accessible. Pretty yeah. simple. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, this has been a topic we will uh, probably revisit on a yeah. number of episodes oh, this year for sure. because yeah. I feel oh, yeah. fired up and I could keep going. Yeah. But let's let's share let's share some other things. We have a one other kind of sad thing and then we'll talk about happy new stuff because i know that it's is this is heavy stuff this is heavy stuff but we are passionate about our emulation around here and we want it to continue and it will continue gosh darn it so my other my other topic was emu deck of course we know removed yuzu and citra jealous is removing uh uh yuzu and uh, emulation station as well is removing that's all sad oh no uh, but also emulation station for Android is a thing now. We talked about this last week. We said, hey, you know, you can get it from Amazon. Well, guess what? Now it's been removed yeah. from Amazon <laughs> already. Yep. And now and now you get it from their Patreon for five dollars and fifty cents, but it's a one time thing. So you subscribe to it, you get your download, you own it, and then you stop your renewal. You can keep supporting them, and they say they appreciate that, of course, but uh, just get in five hundred five bucks fifty cents. Now you get uh, an APK you can use on your Android devices, which is great. And today there is a new update, but that is locked behind their paid option. So version three point oh point oh dash seventeen is available for download. And I haven't joined it yet, so I don't even know what. Yeah, they locked it, so we'll have to find out what what's in that build. I don't know if any of you guys are joined to it yet. I need to after this live stream. Yeah, I'm Hold gonna to probably. It. I keep forgetting to do it. I need to buy and Same. set it up on one of my handhelds. Yeah. I need to do it after this as well. Okay. But that uh, man, just when I swore off using launchers, like we get emulation station. I know we just and now we have emulation station, and the next day now they remove. I'm still a human. Oh. I still I still launch individual emulators. I do too. That's what I'm saying. Like just when I say like <laughs> nice no, I'm have. done with launchers. Yeah, I'm not gonna have them anymore. Like I just launch yeah. individually. I, I use the retroarch as my launcher for like all my older stuff. <laughs> 
Em- then oh yeah. emulation station like man now i gotta try it I mean, so if you if you bought it through our link last week or bought it on amazon you can get a refund amazon will give you a refund for it and then go get it on the patreon yeah please make sure to try and get your refund mm-hmm. yeah don't get let your Bezos refund that money yeah and I'm, I'm pretty sure that it will never appear on play store i don't think i don't think no i don't ever, think so. i don't think it was no. ever gonna allow it yeah which is really well, messed up it's really weird yeah. yeah when you can get it other is. front ends on google and amazon like come on i know yeah google said no amazon says no this very yeah just very strict on on emulator in the emulation scene it's like there's some sort of involvement with piracy in. but i i've never pirated anything in my life same no it's just it's it is really weird that emulation station is the only one that's being targeted for this like you can still download that g show you can get pegasus you can get all these other launchers not an issue you can download all the emulators just but for some optics. reason emulation station is the one that's getting hit maybe it's the name emulation uh, it's station? the name uh, it's the well, name it's the optics it's the popularity you know it's just they, yeah, I was gonna say, maybe, the targets yeah. on them the targets on them yeah you guys i don't know I, you own the games sorry, but do you rip the ones you emulate or download them owning a game and downloading illegal copy is most likely treated differently i don't yeah, know it, not it just is, nintendo i mean some, I mean, we'll show a Switch game, a physical Switch game in a video, like with Mario Kart or something. We'll have the Switch game physically in the shot. And uh, supposedly that should help stop some of the some of the litigious Nintendo. But uh, I don't know now. Well, no, because according to Nintendo, you can't hack your Switch. And according to Nintendo, you don't actually own any of your games. Yeah. And Amazon also sells emulation handhelds preloaded. Yeah. Yes. yes yeah, I saw do. the chat people were talking double, about the hard, hard drives too. The they, they sell those hard drives. If yeah. you want 60,000 yeah. games in one hard drive, you go to Amazon. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I, I you can buy you guys, hard I, drives I, I, with I've, Twitch games. Yeah. I've you know, definitely bought all 16,000 games you get the, with those Kinhang hard drives. I make sure first I go oh, on yeah. eBay and buy each copy of the game in yep. French and PAL regions. <laughs> and, uh, sell you know take out a third mortgage on the house for it and then i go enjoy my kin hank hard drive yeah yeah i mean so that's what, what I, we I, all do right i mean I think yeah, you just outside didn't... of my one favorite game the labo cartridge i can't i can't find it there three mortgages later just to kind of put the the whole like downloading stuff like like behind right now like yes people download games everybody downloads games that's a fact they do know it Yes, they're like that's that's just it is what it is. But First just be, again, what what my argument has been, and I think a lot of people have the same argument is like just because somebody can do that doesn't mean that you can just take everything away because of that. Like just because something can be used for piracy doesn't mean it should be illegal when there's perfectly legal uses for it. That's that's the yeah. argument. And if you can prove that, then there's really not much you can do. Which, but again, this isn't going to go to court, so. But luckily, we don't really have to worry about it. Well, and luckily, it's not going to court. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that would have been even worse off for all the other emulators, yeah, especially really the judge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, There is one remaining thing. When the judge signs the final judgment, he could sign a thing. A, a, there's a clause in there that aims at other emulators, right? I got to look up what that exact, uh, that, what the exact word is. I don't is, think but, um, you can... I don't think you can do that because this was specifically suing Yuzu, not emulators. Right, this but was it was going after us. It was very business. It was very, yeah. very broad terms uh, that could that could set a, a, a precedent. So, anyways, we'll we'll, we'll report for, back on this next yeah. week. Yeah. And unless I'm forgetting something from Schoolhouse Rocks or anything like that, like I don't think a judge can just make a, a law or something like that without actually running it by a due process. Right. Yeah. Why do these guys feel so entitled to free pirated games? Well, that's a good point. I, I really I don't feel entitled to free pirated games. I feel mm-hmm. entitled to play the games that I already own in whatever way I want to. That's yeah. That's the argument a lot of people are saying, like, oh no, you guys just want free stuff. Like look, again, people are gonna do that. That doesn't mean that everybody just wants to do it for that. And I don't think I don't think hitting emulators and hurting preservation is gonna be 
is the way to go because again nintendo has had to go back and download a rom off the internet because they didn't have the game and resell it to us that's thanks to to preservations and emulators and people backing stuff up that's just the fact like the companies are not good about keeping stuff for long periods of time and you got to think about how much guy russ here about that you know exactly and if you, know. right now, yeah. yes, you can buy Switch games. But what's going to happen in 10, 15 years from now? How many of those games are not going to be available anymore? What's going to happen when Nintendo, a few years down the line, decides, hey, we're closing down the eShop and you can't buy all these games like they did with the 3DS? Like, how many 3DS games can you not buy? You There's to, no other buy, way to get them. You have to get physical copies, yeah, of 3DS exactly. games. And, well, actually, Nintendo doesn't want you to buy those physical copies. They don't want you, they don't want you to resell your stuff because they don't get the money. No, they want, they want to release it as a remaster. Spend. They want to release it as a remaster yeah. for Switch or Switch Two, and then get you to pay the money again yeah. to uh, to to have it and play it. Now it's it's yeah. very, yeah. I mean it's 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 messed up. It's messed up stuff. It's their business model though, and they are entitled yeah. to have their money and make their money. And uh, as as emulation enthusiasts, we're allowed to continue to find ways to do what we want to do with the things that we buy. And uh, yeah. I mean that's that's really how it goes. And but, Nintendo's done this before. Like, I bought a bunch of like retro games on my Wii U. They close down mm -hmm. that eShop, and then if I want to play them on my Switch, I have to pay them a monthly fee. I can't even buy the games from them. I have to pay them to be able to emulate them on their system. So yes, I can understand people making an argument right now for Switch games. Like, oh yeah, you guys just mm -hmm. want to pirate your games. Yeah, not right. not really. But okay, fine. That's a fair argument. But in reality, the argument is what's going to happen down the road when we don't have access to these games anymore in a legal way. Do they just get well, lost? Like. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, it's true. I, I was going to point out too that uh, good guy Russ to wrap up this topic emulation emulation station DE added support to some new emulators and fixed the bug where the setup screen showed up every time you reboot. So that's a nice first start yes. uh, in these updates. Thank you, Russ. Well, that's not all, but speaking of front ends, we have one more for you. So this one is called emu hub and it is a different front end experience for Emu Deck, or sorry, for, for your Steam Deck right now. They're starting with the Steam Deck and they're going to have it on Linux, Mac, and eventually Windows. But it's a it's a game first focused uh, emulator. So it's not organizing by system. It really prefers to organize games by relevant info, you know, recently played, recommended collections, et cetera. So this makes it really easy to find what game you want to play and just and not take you out of the immersive experience of you know playing your retro games so it's really nice to see this it looks very clean not only that but i'm very proud of this dev his name is ryan mercado you might remember that name because ryan helped start rh he was one of our co-founders way back in 2020 he was like member number three in our discord and uh, he was also on the first episode of this podcast and uh you know saw him become a dad and just just he i'm just so proud of the kid you know he's leading this big you know emulation project um so good job ryan uh daddy stubbs is proud server dad's proud this is this is really cool man i can't wait to try this out on my steam deck and i love the way the look you, this guy has always loved pegasus and that look and he's taken that design style and just gone bananas with it so cool what v color v90 did you send him when he had a kid, I think he yeah. got the red V90. Um, got it, and it's not the red one. Yeah, I think he got. I think he got <laughs> red. I think he got red. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Ah, uh, good times, good times. Okay, so we love to see this. The beta is out now. Go ahead and grab it from the link in our sources page in our description. So that's enough software for right now. What do you guys think about uh, a little bit of rumor mill? You guys want to talk about that? Oh wait, wait before before that. Oh, I just, okay. oh, okay, oh no! I just, no, 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 no! It's too late now. It's too late now. Say it, say it. Oh, I was because uh, what are you gonna say? Uh, in chat, somebody asked real quick, like, what do you prefer, Emulation Station or Daijisho? And I haven't used Emulation Station yet on Android, so I, I can't really comment on that. Have Have any of you had experience to say like what's the better choice? Uh, the better choice is totally, totally subjective. But my oh, personal yeah. favorite. Uh, I mean, Daijisho at the moment, followed closely by Reset Collection, probably Emulation Station after that. Once they fix all the bugs and mm -hmm. stuff, I would probably say Emulation Station number one because that's my favorite experience on Linux handhelds. So, okay. I mean, that's See, my, that's my take. 
I didn't want to let that question go unanswered. Can't let it linger. Um, well, yeah. okay, so here's a new one. Look at this thing. So this is a leak by Max Zhao, and now Nit Channel Nitrix has picked it up. People are saying that this either is a chopped up RG556 in the form of an RGB30, and it's not real, or Max is just showing it off and it's fake, you know, drumming up interest, or it's completely real and this is happening soon. So yeah, what they've done really here cool. is yeah, it, it looks, looks pretty, pretty real. Jay. It's it's <laughs> a one-to-one -one aspect ratio device, much like the RGB30, and it looks to have hull sticks. Max Zao was saying it's going to have hull triggers and sticks. So basically it's the RG556 in the RGB30 form factor with probably ergonomic back. Most likely rocking the uh, guess what? Probably the T eight twenty is my is, is is my guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, because because of the six at the end. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> and but apparently it might have some new matte plastic. I don't know. Hey, they've been working on this for a while. You guys remember that that hideous? Well, not hideous. It was literally just a five five six, but short that we saw leak uh, mm -hmm. a couple couple weeks ago about that one to one yep. aspect ratio. I'm got I'm glad they're going for something a little bit different. It doesn't look as ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure this is real and we're probably gonna see a video in a couple uh, weeks. They better I mean it with the sticks so, not cardinal snapping. No snapping. No, so time. apparently that's fixed for, for some people were saying that they got their unit and it was fixed. I I think I saw something like that on Discord where it wasn't a problem for them. What? Yeah, somebody Hold posted on. like no what? Hold on, now now that's our top story. Wait, forget everything. Wait, what? <laughs> and, 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 and the, and the hey, RH what on the five hundred six channel, somebody somebody showed like, hey, am I doing this wrong? And it was fixed. And I, and I said, oh wow, it looks like they fixed it for for retail units. And that's kind of I left it at that. I don't know if if am I remembering everything wrong or something. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm gonna I'm go not, look this I'm up. Not, real I'm quick. not. I'm not challenging you at all on it. I'm just saying that. Uh, no, no. Let me let me look this up really quick. That's while you guys incredible talk news. If okay, yeah. okay. Because I put switch sticks on very, mine and it made a huge difference. It makes but, me very uh, we, happy. Makes my heart happy, Ish. Just knowing <laughs> that this might be a thing now. Um, now I hope they release OTA update for us YouTubers who happen to have one early. Well, because Retroid was good guy Retroid and fixed fixed our units which was good with those screen issues i mean it's about the right time i mean when was this 556 announced like actually yeah let, officially dropped. let H cook uh let, this was today i saw it no, right but the 556 was like what five weeks ago you know they love to release a new handle every like six weeks or so so it's a lot it's a lot it's, about, it's a lot right? to keep up with <laughs> so it's we'll a see lot another one in april uh i'm hmm. sure well, i'm sure we'll see something soon uh but you know it's it's uh, it's uh, it's the year of the probably the T820. So we'll oh, more than likely. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing the picture here. He's saying uh, my RG556 from Abernick sent two days ago. Everything's stock. Am I doing this properly? And I'm seeing um, like the sticks are traveling just fine. No hard snapping, nothing like that. Huh. Good. That's incredible. Yeah, so it looks like for I hope... retail unit, it's not going to be an issue. I hope everybody who gets a retail unit has that fixed. That would be, I mean, that's my number one complaint with that device. So, yes, I'm I'm good with that. So, if I just need for my unit, if I just need to throw in some Ghoulie Kit sticks, which I just got on Amazon. Oh, I still like the switch sticks for the five five six, yeah. just because they're they're a little bit taller and a little bit bigger, so they feel a little more comfortable. You like to that use better than like that. Yeah, then I, I, the, think, the I think it works a little bit better. Yeah, switch sticks. No, well, those those work. They're the same size as switch sticks. But if you look at the hall sticks, Amberdick uses, they're just a little bit smaller, a little shorter. So I feel like it's a little harder to aim properly. If you're playing like any type of shoot or anything like that. Yeah, well, the gulag, the gulag sticks. Oh, uh, so gulag sticks. I gotta, I I have my cable or my. Fiber company coming out tomorrow. My connection's not great right now. We have a big, big network degradation degradation in these wires. So apologies on that, everybody. Uh, now, if you'll be able to see it on camera here, uh, it blows can, it out. Kind of see yeah. it, right? Yeah, no, I no, saw so pictures. These are just yeah, these are just regular switch sticks, and they feel a little bit better than what's stock with the with the hall ones. Yeah, because. 
Mm. See, but all the are pretty dang stubby. Well, <sighs> my this is good news. Yeah. This is this is good news to hear. Yeah. Very For good. the all audio right, so... listeners, it's just a, it's just a, a square five five six. <laughs> That's what Amber Nick's teasing. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that square i feel like using a square on a higher power device like the one by one screen almost yeah. feels like a waste at times yeah I, for sure i agree with that 100 like, percent. now you now with the power you can do a lot more with 16 by 9 like games but that's just not yeah. very good on these one by one screens i think this is just the best screen they could find to fit that at that form factor for a high resolution screen I can't imagine it's easy to find like a like a a four inch high resolution four by three screen, whereas Palkiti already has a, a one by one seven twenty p screen. Yeah, so yeah. it's like it makes sense for the resolution. My dream come true. <laughs> oh yeah, Stubbs loves to stretch PSP, so he's gonna be stretch it or or, or 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 let or just have the boxes or letter box around yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, do Stubbs it. nubs fit them? I mean. Yes, yeah. It it should we should be good on on the nubbins. Okay, the only thing I would want that. is from the RGB thirty, just a little bit more power to do Saturn emulation. That's it. Just beyond that, you know. Just, then you're yeah. happy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a little better. Yeah. Well, the other thing that we're seeing happen is a new RK thirty five eighty eight device put inside of a Switch Lite shell. So this is on a QQ group, and they're showing this is a sixteen gigabyte uh 16 gigs of ram is that right mm -hmm. hold on yeah it's it's an rk yep. uh, yeah 16 gigs of ram so I this is the same video chips on this. that we saw yeah this is the same chips that we saw in the uh, the game force ace i'm gonna call it the game force ace from now on yep. and 8000 oh, milliamp yeah. hour battery but they fit it inside of a, a switch shell and apparently it's going to be mass produced so this is going to be a thing you can buy this I don't know if you have to go through probably some sort of a Chinese reseller, but so far this is looking kind of hot. We have some video even here of it in action. You're going to have some really cool accessories like grips and all that for that thing. All of it's ready to go. Yeah. 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 yeah that's cool. I mean, this is really cool. <laughs> it is well, full screen. That one can wrong. probably run switch games too. There we go. I wonder. Wow. I, I imagine it probably wouldn't, but I wonder if it would support the like OLED screens for Switch Lite that we've been seeing. Um, it's swimming probably around. the same screen. <clears throat> I I can't imagine there's a lot of OLED screens being made for for the the size of the Switch Lite. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing yeah. it's going to use just yeah again the Switch the Switch Lite screen. You're finally going to be able to play Genshin on your Switch. That's what everybody <laughs> wanted. Right. Well, again, remember, that was supposed to come to Switch, and it never did. Yeah. You know that Nintendo immediately would shut this down if it was anywhere near the U.S., but thankfully, <laughs> this is being put together, <laughs> cobbled together in China, and so with a little bit of know-how and hey, import. just buying aftermarket shells. Like, Oh, here you go. <laughs> Perfect. You know, they're allowed. If come for a circle. Yeah, we I have Pumpful. We are emulating Nintendo games <laughs> on a Switch Lite. In quotation, it looks so at home. Uh, it's, it's well, it says so here. Funny. It says here in the specs. It says here in the specs that it is an OLED screen. It's a 5.5 .5 yeah, inch OLED, OLED oh. 1080p screen, cool. 256 gigs of eMMC storage, Wi-Fi 5 or 6, unclear. Micro HDMI 2.0, 2.0 DP 1.4 over Type C, has a million power battery. Android 12, 280 grams. Android 13. Oh, I feel like that thing is gonna get so hot. It's gonna get hot, but it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, look, at, look. Do, do you see the shell? If you scroll down more, you can see the internals of it. Yeah, that, they show the that internals. Board. Awesome. Look at that. Oh my god, that thing's gonna be toasty. It's that tight, but they. Though. Got it to fit. Look at that. I mean, it's oh, that battery life is probably it's gonna suck. Damn impressive, though. Yeah, you probably gonna get like two hours of battery life out of that thing. You know, maybe three. 
Yeah, maybe depending Incredible. if you're playing some lighter games, I guess. Because Incredible. That, isn't terrible. the 3588 like pretty power hungry? Uh, you, you were, I, I got to dive into my game force ace and find out and really see I what the chipset's all about. I think the one you sent me here, so I'm going to grab it tomorrow. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about it in a minute, by the way. Uh, let's just talk about it now, actually. Let's skip ahead to that one. So the Game Force <laughs> Ace <laughs> OS is now getting updates. Sorry, Rob. I'm just throwing cool. your life into chaos right now, but I figure all <laughs> around the topic. Uh, Game Force Ace has new updates and, uh, and fixes. So not only was Jealous released today for it officially, but uh, no time to date, renowned lineage developer went ahead and fixed the screen refresh issue in the uh, on the Android build or is in process of fixing it. Not only that, but Ban, do you had you had some other notes on things they fixed? Oh, yeah. So on the announcement page on the Jell OS Discord, they have mm -hmm. a list of what's fully working and what's currently still either broken or a work in progress. Um and right now, the broken work in progress list is only four things. That is the HDMI, mm -hmm. the improved analog triggers. Nice. Booting from EMMC or NVMe. So yeah, mm -hmm. again, these are the ones that are in the broken or work in progress list. And the last one says mapping various standalone emulators controls. Um, which to me i took that as like there are some mapping issues with standalone emulators however i i could be wrong and i could be misreading that but it sounds like a lot of other things for jello s are working now so that's great that's really good to hear nice. and they're gonna apply no time is applying some of those fixes into the android stock android rom so that is really nice to hear. Not only that, but Gao Feng, the maker of the Game Force, uh, is offering people boards and kits he's going to send out if you have the trigger issue. So he will send that for people to fix on their own, but it's nice to see that as an option. So between the software fixes and the hardware fix option, the Game Force is really shaping up to be a possible contender alongside the 556 and the RP4 Pro uh, because that 3588 supposedly is a lot of luck cooking un under the hood so i need to dive in and sort of evaluate did gamma get one sorry did, yes. did gamma get one oh nice. i uh game force ace yeah i'm, I'm never not going to call it a game force ace now it's just now it's stuck that's in fine <laughs> I, I don't take credit for the current state of the game force ace but i am happy to take credit for it down the road you are, you are the game force ace yeah I just I just want like the the Xbox uh, spoof thing that Gamma and Retroid and AYN have on their handhelds. Like after having that in an Android handheld, I can't go back. That's the one thing I don't love about my 556 is that I can't use the controllers as if it was just an Xbox controller. That's the only reason why I want Gamma to get one. Yeah, I just wanted him to get it so he can get his Game Force A Sean. Really? Oh yeah. Uh, that should be should I be think good. Everybody First... should get their Game Force A Sean. Everyone should get their game for say, Sean. I hope you say that in your video by accident once. No, don't don't delete Yuzu from any device you have it on. Keep it. Use keep it. it. Use you already it. have it. Yeah. And Nintendo, and no, Nintendo cannot specifically take down a YouTube channel. YouTube no. can choose to take down a you YouTube a channel strike, whenever they want. Yeah. But I don't think you. I don't think anybody that made content would use you has anything to worry about because all of that stuff yeah. was made before this happened. But going forward, uh, you probably want to stay away from Yuzu because now Nintendo owns it. That's right. Nintendo owns Yuzu. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the only reason why I would say don't probably don't make videos using Yuzu anymore. Um, find alternatives for it. But uh, well, as far as like content you made before. Yeah. Never mind the title of this live stream either. It's yeah. Well, we're not showing you running. No, we would never. Never. No. You can well, talk about Yuzu, you just can't show it playing Nintendo games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, what about nice third party? So. Yeah. Well, it's true. 
So what about what about other handhelds? So GPD Win Mini is getting 8840U revision in happier news. It's going to have a new 7-inch 120 hertz VRR variable yes. refresh rate display, yes. which yes. is something that people nice. were excited about. So we're going to see that. The Indiegogo should be up shortly for this one. And there's also oh, a GPD cool. Win Max 2 as well, getting the 8840U revision, and of course the GPD uh, Win 4. So all three, all three of their flagships are getting this brand new chipset. Not only that, but people are saying that uh, there's also some new what display out options in this. So the heat's lowered somehow. That's pretty cool. I was I surprised. They, I like, know they how dropped well... the um, the OcuLink port in favor of the a, OcuLink a port. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, yeah, so now you have USB A port instead, yep, and they've exactly. lowered the heat on this further somehow. Mm -hmm. So, GPD Win Mini might be an option if you run the fence. The Win Mini is awesome. I love the Win Mini. My my only I know you do was that it, that it was a little bit warmer on the inside where the, the analog sticks are, but mm -hmm. they solved the issue on the backside. So now I'd love to see them, you know, kind of dissipate the heat in a different way because it's just it's just on that thumbstick area where you're pretty much resting your fingers all the time. So beyond I that, just yeah, wish I mean, it had bigger they, sticks. That'd be nice. I, yeah, the sticks yeah. are not great. That was another one of my complaints. Yeah. The sticks are just, they're so tiny. They're it's the same ones that Murdoch uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're, and they're recessed so far in. It's the, mm -hmm. I mean, I understand why because of the form factor, but yeah, they're kind of uncomfortable to use. Yeah, it's better than a slider. Yes, better than a slider, please. No, I feel like you're always going to have just some sort of messed up experience with sticks in a clamshell. <laughs> Just put some, the ones that Retroid uses. Yeah. Hey, guys. You know what? You know what else? MSI Claw pre-orders are live. They, that all oh, silently man. happened during all the kerfuffles today with Yuzu and things. And then, of course, uh, uh, our, there's Rob and Joey. God, they've grown up so much. Uh, the MSI Claw. I think Joey's got to worry about things. <laughs> Yeah, Joey has the most piracy related <laughs> stuff on his channel. Good luck, good luck, Joey. We love you. Uh, but MSI Claw is available for pre-order on Newegg of all places, up for starting at six ninety nine wow. or five hundred ninety nine dollars, right? At the lowest no, end skew. Six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Yeah. Please don't, don't buy that skew. Please don't buy that. And that skew. that yeah. gets you the Ultra down. Five. Oh, the Ultra Five thir thirteen. 135h uh, which is it's it's not the best performer so you're really going to want to spend about 750 dollars which gets you the ultra 7 155h 16 gigs of ram 512 gigs storage windows 11 and it has 120 hertz screen that's the one i believe that we did test out at ces and it has a ways to go still so i i i myself am not picking this one up we might get one for review uh, so stay tuned for H mm -hmm. if we do get one. The pre-orders are so they're all over the place. I mean, the dates are all yeah. over the place. The um, availability seems to be kind of weird. The, the places that are selling it, it's it's just seems like a mess. We, right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure this is going to be much better than what we saw at CES because even when we after we got hands on, remember uh, Raven ran into one of the developers and he had like the finalist product and he said that it felt better than what we got to play with. Yeah. So as far as the hardware, I'm sure it's going to be better. Software is the one I'm kind of worried about because the drivers just are where an issue like performance wasn't what it should be. Like we saw Assassin's Creed running better than the Sonic game we were playing. And that's a, a big 3D game versus a 2D game, which was crazy. So I hope they got that side of things figured out. But uh, I don't know how much they can themselves do. It kind of has to be on Intel to yep. get all that stuff sort sorted out. Yeah, I mean, like I experienced the issue with Alan Wake 2 when I was testing the X1 with the 155H. So mm -hmm. uh, driver issue is definitely uh, going to be a thing. Yeah. Which uh, maybe a couple months down the road after you after yeah. they've had some time and people are yeah. hands on and there's community support for it, it's going to be a lot better. Mm -hmm. But definitely, if you're going to be an early adopter, chances are it's going to be a little bit bumpy out the gate. And yeah. keep that in mind if you do decide to order it. Yeah. I am not so stoked on this one right now i don't feel compelled to go out and pre-order it but i know rob you were saying you're gonna pick it up right yeah I, i'm I, I liked i liked the way it felt i thought the ergonomics mm -hmm. were really good i think i think the build quality is gonna be really good you know we'll we'll, we'll see how the final product is I'm, I'm curious you know it's just that battery life for me you know and the tdp yeah. starting at 15 watts 
it's just, well, it's, like, it's funny it's because so they, they, so they advertise how it has the, you know this massive 53 watt hour battery or whatever and it's like yeah it's it's gonna kind of need it <laughs> yeah 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 they can definitely run some switch games yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's my new benchmark for everything. Can it run Switch games? Mm, <laughs> maybe. Okay, so MSI Claw. More on this soon. Not only that, but you want to see another fun little handheld experiment? It's called the Sugar Cube Alliance. You guys seen this one? <laughs> channel oh God, Channel no. Nitrix. <laughs> channel Nitrix oh, put this video yeah. up. I and this thing. I wish I didn't. It's like an AI. Same, same. It's it's yeah. an AI render made into reality with like a, it looks like a metal shell, a floating D pad. Uh, it looks like an MP3 player from two thousand four. What's to the right of the of the uh, the D pad or whatever the hell? It that looks D like a camera. I is that a camera? Is that like <laughs> on a, the top? A, 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 thumb screen? a thumbprint reader? <laughs> it's like a. Oh, that's how you get in the handheld. Like a three. No, no, I thought, I thought you meant like next to the screen. Those <laughs> no. those things look like cameras next to the screen. Pad, though. That's probably where it? sticks are gonna go. What is going on in this image here? <laughs> what is going on in this handle? That would make sense for sticks to go there, but like what's hey, they'd have to be different sizes. Well, it could be like the, the retro pocket two good. where it was well, a done. stick and a slider. Put a nub there, like the yeah, six... a little nub, like like the 3DS nub. What game is this? I know it's a gun game. Like, but it looks like what Gundam, game is yeah, yeah. At first, I, I thought it was Transformers. <laughs> legally back it up after this. Apparently, it's based on the Jelly Star phone. Oh, that would make sense. For the cameras? Uh, I think. I don't know the cameras, but the I think they're talking about this stuff. Look, even they had stacked shoulder buttons. Oh, I see oh, the unit hurts in the back. So, yeah, yeah. it's definitely the, the Jelly Star, but. Oh, yeah, oh they've stuck oh, it. They, oh, they stuck the phone <laughs> into. <laughs> they purposely, great. they purposely put it in this form factor, though, on purpose. Oh, man, look Wait, at that's this a whole thing. different. Wait, oh, we've seen one. that we've one. We've been boozled. We've seen that one. We've before. seen this one. Nitrix, what are you doing? By the ban way, ban boozled. <laughs> the, they just ban boozled. Oh no, you the, can't wow. do this. Or maybe yeah. I guess this is the prototype, right? I mean, that's got to just be them actually making it come to life. Man, I hope that's that can't that's, be. That's like what nothing. What, it, what we saw in the render. Uh, I can't but, unsee those nails. By the, the way, fingernails are the really the first star comment of the show. <laughs> so for just for the audio listeners, this is a vertical handheld with a sixteen by nine screen. That's just a a rectangle with yes a phone in it. That's literally what this is. <laughs> and it's a, like a 3-inch, 3.5-inch, 16 by 9 screen, 9 screen. Yeah, it's not even a, uh, it doesn't even look like a good 16 by 9 screen. This uh, is such a weird device. Yeah, the, and it looks nothing know, like the render right now, so. <laughs> no. I'm afraid. I'm scared. Just a little bit. Where did it go? Where did it go? The Unihertz Jelly Star has a G99 in it as well, so we at least know the that performance on a three inch screen i don't know how to describe this with a voice only bubble bottle is correct it's <laughs> it's interesting take take a look at it if you're listening to the audio yeah, right now just you kind of have to like i, I tried a little bit up. for anybody that's just kind of driving around listening to this but it's, it's one of those you have to see ever. pull over pull yeah. over your car somewhere safe click the link Click the link, Sugar Cube Alliance. You need to, if you're asleep right now listening to this, and you need to wake up from your fever dream. And <laughs> that game looks cool, though. This looks like Take a look something at this. that someone did dream up in there and just not like, during a uh, good dream. While you're dreaming, I hope you're having a some good slumber. And don't worry about anything. Everything's going to be all right. We'll all be okay. Uh, emulation will continue. It was a dream. Yuzu wasn't real to begin with. It would never happen. Uh, you've been in a coma for five years. We've been trying to reach you. We've been trying to reach you. Wake up from your coma. Just have a little, little they coma wake up. They just released the RG350. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up, honey. There's a new Ambernick RG406. <laughs> That's going to be in a couple of days with that 406. Yeah, for sure. 
that square 406 i you know we're laughing at it right now but i have a feeling that we're all going to end up liking that thing just kind of mm. like with the 556 like when we first saw the 556 it looked ridiculous and then we got hands on and we're like oh wait actually this is kind of good they got I just us want you and, I, and while while we're talking to you and you're sleeping and you're and you're <laughs> oh on your God. travels i just want to say that i'm so proud of you just i'm so proud of what you've done um today and every day just good job you you know what you're the best so that's from all of us we're thinking about you uh <laughs> he's not wrong my favorite part of this video is right here when, when he just drops the whole thing oh my god yeah it's so good hey guys do you want to Stop talking about really weird handhelds being released <laughs> and end on a on a high note of guess what? Oh, it's a new man. month. It's March and we have new game of the month games to uh to show off. So there are nice. three games that won the hearts, the minds, and the souls of our beloved Discord community. Number one, pre-1996, we got Castlevania Bloodlines. That is a game for the Genesis released in 94 it's an action platform where you can beat it in about three hours i beat it yesterday like in one game. day in like two play in like two play sessions and you can beat it in you know, about two to three hours fun quick get yourself a point get yourself some swag really cool not my favorite castlevania i've played it was really tough in some of those later boss fights but uh, i recommend it and then in the 96 to 99 category we got my favorite role-playing game of all time, Nate the Great. You got this one voted in somehow with your with your hackery. Uh, and our podcast promotions, I'm sure, helped in some regard, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, Star Wars oh, and Second Story is the best. They have it for PlayStation, PSP, Steam, Windows, Switch, wherever you want. It's about 39 hours to play through it. With speed running, you can go as quick as five hours, though. And uh, this is, of course, an RPG from Triace. And Squeenix, I'm he a plays little cloud. upset myself with this game. Really, that's all. It's so good. I, There's, I voted, so I voted for it. I was excited, and then I remembered that I just started don't have, Persona Three. You don't have 39 hours in, in the month, I know. Well, I, <laughs> I'm playing Persona Three, uh, Fez, and now I voted for this one. And like, man, now I have to play another RPG while I'm playing an <laughs> RPG. You have to play Star story. Ocean. You have to play Star Ocean Second Story. It is one of the genre defining games it's definitely one of the top games on the playstation and 80 different endings you can play as uh, claude or as reina i named I heard there's most a really of my cool switch port. there's a really cool switch port the new star ocean 2 remaster star ocean r second yes. three r um, is, has some great quality of life improvements you know what there's you can't go wrong really with any version but that's probably the definitive one now awesome art style uh, I named a lot of my childhood cats after Star Ocean characters. Just a little factoid there for you. So we had a lot of cats. You know, up. you're the reason why I voted for this game and I actually want to play it. Because I feel like if you're willing to go into a 40-hour RPG and it like hooked you that much, like it's got to be a good game. I have to try it. It's Dude, the art style is just bar none so cool. That 2D pixel art against 3D backdrops. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. I recommend and it. And Zoo kind of pressured me into voting for it too. But well, there, now that now that it's <laughs> here, I kind, of re I kind <laughs> of regret. I kind of regret it winning because we could have had Tony Hawk's Pro Skater on the PlayStation. Uh, yeah, that would have been a fun game. Like, I, I love Tony. Could, I love Tony. We could, have, yeah. we could have beaten that in one day, but now we're left with this. How many of us are actually going to beat this game from start to finish this month? The chances are slim to none. But by golly, I'm we've gonna, tried I'm for four years. <laughs> We've gotten this gonna do voted it. in. The only person who's going to beat it is Nate. And Zoo. No, I'm going to beat it too, Ben. I don't, I don't need your negativity. Okay? It's an adorable you, game. Background. Okay, the cooking <laughs> mechanics are great. You know, press this. She's a delight. Uh, and guess what? After I beat this, I get to go beat Star Ocean Blue Sphere for Game Boy, finally, because that's the sequel to this. So, nice. No, no choice. See, That's I told right. myself I was going to finish Persona 3, and then I was going to start Final Fantasy VII Remake cause to get no. ready for, for the new one, and then I voted for this. It's going to be a fun month. We have to, listen, Ace, Game Force Ace, you just have to mm -hmm. suck it up, 
We're going to do play, this. Yeah, you got to do you need to focus 24/7 for the next month on this. Don't don't make videos, don't uh, talk to your family. Be no, all, I have all to role playing to games. We're going to star yeah. this ocean. Okay, you got to star this ocean. Okay, so that's the second game and the third game is this is a classic you might know. It's called Cave Story. It's the original Cave yeah, Story gish game, Metroidvania game for the Wii, the Switch, the Mega Drive, Portmaster, 3DS. It's, it's on everything. every build of yeah, RetroArch. Not- Anything that runs RetroArch, you can play this on. And you can beat it in about eight hours. I'm debating right now what version to play. I'm playing the Steam version right now on my Steam Deck, and it's kind of buggy. The controls aren't great. So I'm thinking I might switch to the Genesis port just for the retro achievements or the 3D version, which I know is heresy. People get really mad about that on Reddit. This is the one that I'm planning on doing this month. And I'm going to be using Portmaster for that one. Mm. Because I just... Because I got the yellow one in for that. Yes, on your RGB Max 3 non heart 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 handheld. No heart heart heart. (laughs) No, I don't hard, even hard, know what version to play was, of this. There's so many. There are so many countless. There is a Wikipedia page dedicated to all the different versions of Cave Story, and there are yeah, something like tons. forty or fifty yeah. builds, different versions. Like the Amiga has a version. Like they backported it oh. to all these retro consoles. It's kind of incredible. Is there a search version I can back up and play somewhere else? I just want to use a version that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play a version that I have fast forward on that has save states and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. You can only get that with emulator. Em, uh, that's why emulation. That's why I'm thinking that the the Genesis version is the way to go. You get retro achievements; they're enabled for that version, and you get uh, you get fast forward, you get save states, all that good stuff. So, Ooh, and I can play it on my Arc. Ooh. You can play it in your Arc, and it would look great on there. Only thing yeah. is, the art supposedly is best on the switch the nintendo switch version is the definitive version according to reddit and the internet at large however how are you going to play that if you don't own it you're not buy it 30 dollars 30 dollars no. on your switch you're going to play it yeah yeah this play it on my soon. switch oled i see how are we going to have these conversations anymore how are we going to talk about this stuff this uh. is crazy I'll play it on Ryu Jinx. Ryu Jinx. Ryu Jinx? Ryu Jinx. Royo, Ryu, Ryu I just Jinx. say Ryu because Ra- I just Fire. say Ryu Jinx. Yeah. I Jinx. Jinx. I've, just, I've just been letting you all pronounce it this whole time. Ryu Jinx. <laughs> oh, we, got, we, didn't, we didn't even mention the MIG switch. I forgot about that. Ooh. Yeah. The yeah. MIG, I'm pretty the sure MIG a switch. couple of us have uh, videos coming out or we're planning on making videos on that. So that's Zoo. Zoo well, was I mean, about it. Zoo was. Yeah. Yep. Yep. If they set out the dumper, I mean, there's you're dumping your own games. Well, that's another can of worms that Nintendo needs to deal with. I think that's why they're there. They went after Yuzu. Like they're trying to scare people off from all of that. Yeah. Isn't isn't they mix are... switch like based out of Russia though? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good luck yeah, with that. Right. Yeah. Good luck to Nintendo. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> they're they're mainly trying to scare people off with all of this. I mean, this is classic Nintendo. I thought that they were kind of backing down a bit in the last year. I'm like, all right, they're being a little bit chill. There is no chill with Nintendo. They want oh, their money and they want their IP yeah. protected. They well, were definitely building up which a is their right. That's what I think it, was it going is. on. The past Speaking of that, there's one thing I want to address. Like the last comment in chat where it says, it's Nintendo's MP, you don't own it, so you can't just do whatever you want with it. Um, game creators should get paid just like you guys do. I agree with that. Game creators should get paid. And I've said it multiple times in my videos. I've been here on the podcast where it's saying, like, for indie games, buy them, at least buy them somewhere if you're going to emulate them. Make sure that you have it, that yeah. th- those devs got that money. And for Nintendo games, like, I think we've all. Like when Tears of the Kingdom came out, I think almost all of us went out and bought a Switch OLED just to play that game. <laughs> I got robbed at least. I know for a fact I got you to buy one. So we all <laughs> yeah. buy a bunch of Nintendo games. I bought games. The, the whole like, damn uh, limited edition Switch OLED yeah, like, Switch I and everything. The, the wooden plague right here that came with my version of Tears of the Kingdom. 
with the yeah. and i bought a switch only just for that so yes we buy games we all have massive steam collections we all have a bunch of switch games like we're buying games that's not what this is about we are going to come and talk about this quite a lot this year i feel like so yes. stay tuned for more from us about that guys thank you so much for joining me today and hanging out and talking about this madness what an insane week it has been in the emulation scene this is i mean there's still breaking news happening every hour today every hour i had to rewrite the script for this episode because it was like oh my god now this is happening now go now this now this so just i'm glad we're doing this weekly now because there is a lot to cover yeah. and talk about and thank you all out there for being with us as well please uh we hope you enjoyed this episode and please don't forget to like comment and subscribe for your weekly dose of handheld news a special thanks, of course, to our channel members, patrons, and subs for making this show possible. Perks with us start as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to check out our other videos. Join us on our Discord to chat and play games and not share Yuzu and Citra links. But uh, join us next week where we're going to be hanging out with our buddy Shem from Retro Breeze. So nice. he'll be here next Monday. And we're going to start at the, uh, the same time, of, I believe, at 6 p.m. Also... We're going to have Russ on after that. And then we're going to have, we might be getting my order mixed up here, but then we'll also have Aiden on for the first time with us. So Aiden, oh, nice. of course, is uh, is running out of South Africa. So we'll probably start maybe an hour later for him, like 7 p.m. PST. So we'll keep it, we'll keep it reasonable. We won't keep you up too late. We want to be a little bit accommodating. But uh, yeah. Aiden Wall is an awesome dude, and I'll actually be on another episode with him shortly. So stay tuned on his channel as well. Yeah, check out his interviews. Uh, awesome. Yeah, there's some fun interviews. I think most of us on here have been interviewed by him as well. We need we need the ban episode next. I mean, I've come up in like talks on some of his, but yeah, no. We need the we need the full reveal. I want him to dive deep into what happened with the attic situation. I know we don't talk about it. I know we don't address it, but oh, oh no! There he goes. Oh, there he Dan, goes. I wanted to. I wanted to thank you for. I wanted to thank you for giving oh, me a 3D printed copy of these nuts. Um, this is really cool. I put this up, up on my shelf. So again, for the Anyways, audio everybody. listeners, he's holding a peanuts a peanut that says these like. It just says these. That's all it yeah, is. There's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. made this for me. Thank you. Right, we're not allowed to talk about beans. Oh, sorry. Oh. It, yes, please. Anyways, do. everybody, just thanks for joining us. As always, this has been Stubbs. On behalf of Rob, Aish, and Ban, take care of your handhelds, everybody, <laughs> and each other. We'll see you next time.